and to our family and friends, happy Tuesday. Welcome to the living room. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are gathering to hear the word of the Lord once again. We are in the middle of a fantastic series called Stages and uh, we are going to dive into part six of the word of the Lord and I trust and pray and hope uh, that you and your family are well and safe and uh, we are praying for you to our sanctuary family. Big shout out to you. We love you. We miss you so much and uh, we can't wait to be gathering real soon uh, to see everyone's faces. So I uh, want to encourage you as you gather in the living room uh, real quickly before we get into the word of the Lord. Um, we're, we're getting ready to close out the summer season and I'm sure it's been uh, a great one amidst of all the uh, things that's been happening all around us. But yet still, uh, we took advantage by uh, gathering with friends and family and um, sure we've had many barbecues and getaways and maybe uh, perhaps vacations. Uh, but as we get ready to gear back to go back to school, uh, September is right around the corner. So as a matter of fact, today is September, right? As a matter of fact, and uh, so we're getting ready to approach the Labor Day weekend and uh, getting ready to send our kids back to school. Thank you, Jesus. So as we are coming together and go, uh, getting ready to get into the word of the Lord, I want to uh, just encourage you to stay connected, uh, stay engaged to uh, the things of God, the sanctuary live uh, remains uh, alive and strong and well. And uh, because of uh, your support and uh, your involvement and, and, um, and what you do to uh, make um, ministry in such an effective way, uh, every Sunday at 1115 and Tuesday nights right here in the living room at 8 p.m., we can't do uh, what we do uh, without your loving support. And so we want to continue to stay faithful in this season. Uh, stay engaged and uh, be supportive of, of the worship, the word, and in giving so that uh, we can uh, continue to do the work of the Lord and the kingdom of God uh, in this season. So um, again, we want to say how much we are thankful uh, to be a part of the church and to have this platform and uh, all the things that are necessary for us to do ministry uh, continually in an effective way by reaching you and your family and so many others. To all those that are new, that, it, that may be in the living room tonight, big shout out to you. We love you. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. And we hope that today's, tonight's lesson will be a blessing to you and your family. Um, if you are new, I want you to go to the website, www.thesanctuary.nyc. That's our church website. And we want you to click I'm new. Uh, there you will be connected and um, to be a part of our church family. And we want to make sure that uh, you are a part of uh, what, what we are and what we do as a church. And uh, we want to make sure that we personally reach out to you to let you know how much we're thankful that you are a part of this experience and what we are doing this evening. Um, please like and share this experience tonight. Like and share the word of the Lord. We want you to comment. We want you to be involved. We don't want no one just sitting and watching and just spectating. We want you to be a participator. I want you to comment, throw some emojis in the comment box, uh, like and share for, the, for those that are on Facebook Live and, and uh, YouTube Live. Uh, press that share button. Let's, uh, let's, let's break the record. I, I want to see so many people uh, in the living room tonight on a virtual platform, uh, and you can help by pressing share uh, so that you can share this uh, experience uh, on your page. And we are so thankful uh, and appreciative that you're able to do that. Let's have a word of prayer uh, before we get into the word. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful uh, that you are God and God alone, and we're thankful for life, health, and strength. We thank, thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings. Your grace and your mercy has been better to us than we can be to ourselves. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, and all that we've needed, thy hands has provided. And Lord, one more time, you've blessed us, and you've allowed us uh, to be in the living room together, Lord God, to share your word. And I pray, God, that as we gather, Lord, that we gather together in expectation, expectation and in participation, Lord God, of what you're getting ready to speak into our spirits about. And I pray that you will uh, touch our minds and our hearts. And I pray for an openness of spirit, a readiness of mind, oh God, and an expectation of what you're getting ready to speak to us about that we can uh, draw nearer to you, O oh God, and that we can continue, Lord God, to live our lives and let our light shine, O oh God. And I pray that you'll uh, pour into us, O oh God, that we will uh, be edified tonight and that you will be glorified. 
We thank you for all those that are new in the living room tonight. Thank you, Lord, for our family and friends. We pray that you'll bless them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get into the word of the Lord. I'm turning to the gospel of Matthew chapter 6. This is part 5 of Stages. Last week, Tuesday, was a great lesson. We talked about uh, real relationships. And um, man, we, we had an awesome presence of God, and I hope that you are blessed by that. And what's so cool about um, uh, the, being in the living room is that uh, if you were to miss tonight's lesson uh, from a live standpoint, that it's always archived so that you can always go back and watch it and listen. And um, so you won't be able to miss uh, the word of the Lord. So, but we're, we're glad that you're here live and um, we're, we're going to be blessed tonight. Matthew 6 uh, verses 9 and 10. And I'm going to title uh, tonight's lesson, Your Kingdom Come. Can you, can you type that in the comment box? Your Kingdom Come come. I, I want God's kingdom to come. And this is a, uh, a familiar passage of scripture. This is a, uh, uh, the, the prayer in Matthew 6 uh, verses 9 and 10. And I'll read from the New International Version. It says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This then is how you should pray. And verse 10 says, your kingdom come. I want to I focus uh, for the next few moments on that, on that phrase, your kingdom come. Part six of stages. And I want to open up by saying to everyone that the kingdom of God was the main message of Jesus Christ. Um, he spoke about it. He, he talked about it. He gave more uh, instructions concerning it than any other subject. And yet, sadly, many Christians today struggle to understand what the kingdom of God is really all about and the impact it should have on our everyday life. The Bible says it like this in Matthew 6 and verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Another translation says it like this, your heavenly father already knows all your needs and he will give you all your need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. That's a very powerful translation, really breaks it down to give us a better understanding that God knows our needs. Our father, he knows all our needs and that he will, he not only knows our needs, but he will give us all that we need because he's a God that supplies our needs from day to day. We don't have to worry. We don't have to live our lives every day, you know, uh, without and with lack, knowing that that God is the supplier of all our needs. But it's all wrapped up if we make the kingdom of God our primary concern. And we're going to dive into some stuff today that I tonight that I hope that uh, really will challenge us as a people of God, to seek ye first the kingdom of God in our lives. You know, as we're chasing after dreams and goals and as we're chasing after uh, desires and uh, all these things to better our lives, our family, yet in the, in the, uh, in, through all of that, we, we want to make sure that not only Christ is in the center of it all, but that he's priority, that he's, he's the primary concern and goal for all of us, knowing that without him, we will not have what we have and we will not be where we are in life. We've got to make the kingdom of God our primary concern. Could it be, hear me tonight, could it be that, that we have it backwards when we pray for our needs first? Could, let, let's think about it. Could, it. could it be that we pray the wrong prayers to get our needs met? Could it, could it be, what, what would happen if we prayed, God, your kingdom comes first? Where would we be in life? What would we have? Where would we be if we have that mindset and we have that prayer from an uh, intentional, consistently praying, God, before I pray for anything else, your kingdom comes first in my life. We, we will not begin to line up uh, you know, with, we, we won't even imagine, you know, with the God's blessings and, and his favor on our life, if we can 
only think and just get it in our spirit tonight that his kingdom has got to be first, that that is our primary goal, and that lines us up with God's blessing in our life. And while it is not necessarily wrong to pray for our needs, the problem comes in when we put our needs and desires first and leave God's purpose until the last. Let me ask a question in the living room tonight. Have you ever thought about what might happen if our prayers were answered the instant we asked them? I mean, let's think about it. How, how cool will that be that the moment you ask God for something, God gives it to you? <laughs> I mean, because some of us, you know, we pray and we got to wait after we pray. We pray and we go through these seasons where... Uh, we got to have patience. We got to exercise patience and we got to wait on the Lord because his ways are not our ways. His timing is not our timing. But how cool will it be in life that every time we pray for something, a need that God gives it to us? My guess is that many people would be healed. Many people will be blessed and financial problems will go away. And we will, we'll, you know, we'll have all our jobs and, and, and so on. The list goes on of how many uh, blessings, you know, will, will, will be attached to our lives. But, but what impact on the kingdom of God would there be if, if it was just about praying for what I need and God gives us that? The way I see it tonight, that God is basically saying to all of us in the living room, if you will handle my business before yours, then I will bless yours. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. If you will handle my business before yours, then I will bless yours. You see, God wants to be first. Somebody comment first. Yes. He wants to be first in all areas of our lives, including our prayers. So the question is, how do we do this? Pastor Omar, how do we make this a priority? How do we include this in our prayer as far as putting God first in the kingdom of God first. And, you know, we begin by asking God to show us his will. We, you know, we, we can find that his, we can find his will uh, lining up with uh, our lives through his word. And as we begin to pray the word of God, we, we pray for the family of God all over the world instead of just our family. We, we pray for the church worldwide and, and not just our local church. We pray for deliverance and we pray for healing and we pray for salvation of lost people throughout the world. We pray for the spirit of God to bring understanding to the unsaved and we pray for the unity of the body of Christ worldwide. So it's just not our world. It's not just or it's not just our family. It's not just our church and it's not just our job, but it's it's so much around us. Others, you know, Jesus says we got to look to the fields for they are white and ready uh, and ripe and ready to harvest. And so uh, it's, it's not just my field. It's not just what's going on in my life. But Jesus says we got to look to the fields. And there's a blessing wrapped up where we have an understanding that, that it's not just about us, but it's about others. Community is such a, a big thing when it comes to God. Community is such a powerful thing. And we can, and we can pray and pray that God bless others and, and heal others and touch others especially in this time where, you know, we're slowly coming out of this pandemic and we're slowly in the process of uh, reopening with guidelines and, and making sure that we, we play it safe and we do things uh, from uh, precautions uh, that, that to ensure that when we do gather that people are, are going to be okay and people are going to be safe. But, but all of that, you know, with social distancing and with the online platform and all the things that we're doing, it gives us a greater opportunity to, while we're missing your faces and, you know, to call somebody and send a text message and pray for somebody else, send a word of encouragement to somebody else. That's what community is all about. Can I, can I say to somebody in the living room tonight that our prayers will carry the greatest power and have the greatest impact if we get our priorities right. And it is, it is time to enlarge our vision. It is time to lose our tunnel vision and see the bigger picture. And so I want to ask you tonight, do, do your prayers show how concerned you are for the kingdom of God? All your prayers, whenever time that is that you pray, I, I want to ask you a question. Do your prayers show 
how concerned you are about God's kingdom. If not, then tonight, it's the time to start. We've got to start putting the things of God first. Yes, I, I'm about the kingdom of God tonight. We, we are going to promote God's kingdom. We're going to promote uh, we're going to promote it and anthem it in our hearts and in our spirits tonight that we've got to seek first the kingdom of God, that God's got to be priority. And he, he's not, he can't be second. He can't be third place. He's got to be number one in our life and God's kingdom. So let's make that a commitment as we go into tonight's lesson that from this day forward, we're going to promise, we're going to make a vow that there will be a difference in our life. And the principle works. And when you handle God's business first, God is going to take care of you. That's that it's about seeking first the kingdom of God. So we've been talking about God's delight. And we know that delight is God. Uh, that's joy in motion, that God delights in his people. God delights in his people when they pray. And I believe in, in this season that God is calling us not just to any kind of prayer, but prayer in accordance with his will and in complete faith. God delights in kingdom prayers. That's the word that we're focusing on tonight. Somebody, I want you to type that in the comments. Say kingdom. God delights in kingdom prayer. We're going to talk about what's, what's kingdom prayer tonight. We must do more in our prayers uh, than just repeat. You know, sometimes we get in that stuck mode, you know, how many of you, you know, just throw a hand up, uh, throw a hand emoji up in the comment box. How many of you have found yourself sometimes praying Jesus, 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 Jesus. How many times, you know, we find ourselves praying, oh God, oh God, oh God. God. <laughs> can, can I, can I bust the bubble tonight for all of us in the living room? And impress God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, will, I will repeat, you know, we get into that mode and sometimes, you know, we want to rock back and forth and, you know, just, you know, try to get in that mode and try to feel after God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And that's all that we're saying. And, and you know, God sometimes look at us and say, how many times are you going to call my name? You know, I got four children and I, and, you know, if they just if they just keep on saying dad, 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 event, that's. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Vain repetition doesn't impress God. And guess what? It doesn't scare the devil either. Yep, it, it doesn't scare the devil. However, we know that as James chapter 5 verse 16 says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And Jesus said in John 14 verse 13, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You see, you see, family, earnest and fervent prayer in the name of Jesus, it brings great power to bear on your own life and circumstances. And kingdom prayer mobilizes heaven and puts the devil to flight. Thank you, Jesus. So the question we need to ask ourselves tonight is, what is kingdom prayer? What is Kingdom prayer. And, and let me let me let me say it like this. Kingdom prayer is prayer focused on God and his kingdom in agreement with his will and prayed with boldness and faith. Four components there. Kingdom prayer is focused on God and his kingdom. It's in agreement with his will and it's prayed with boldness and faith. That's kingdom prayer. I don't want you to miss it in the living room. Uh, let me say it again. It is prayer that's focused on God and his kingdom. It's in agreement with his will, and it's prayed with boldness and faith. It is the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is already in heaven. 
this is the kind of prayer that delights the Father. So let's go through uh, different uh, points here as to what kingdom prayer is. I think the first thing that we want to highlight is this. Kingdom prayer, kingdom prayers are selfless. Can, can you say that with me? Throw that in the comment. Kingdom prayers are selfless. Yeah, selfless. Kingdom prayers are selfless. Kingdom prayer is one of the greatest spiritual disciplines you can develop because it is prayer that puts you squarely, watch it now, in agreement with God and his purpose. Kingdom prayer. Remember, we, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. How can two walk together, or rather last week when we were uh, dealing with relationships, how can two walk together unless they agree? We've got to be in agreement with God. Kingdom prayer. It positions us. It, it puts us in right position. It puts us squarely in agreement with God. How many, how many want to be squarely in agreement? I don't want to be out of place when it comes to God's word in my life, God's plan, God's purpose. No, I want to be squarely in agreement with God and his purpose for my life. And this is much more effective and powerful than simply praying for blessings upon yourself. Praying for your own need is good and praying to get help is encouraging, but kingdom prayer is far more better. Here's another way to understand this concept. This, will, this is going to bless you tonight. People who truly seek God's blessing must give him permission to say no as well as yes to their request. I think sometimes we have this uh, human tendency, you know, we, when, we, when we talk to God, when we pray, we expect all yeses. But, but can, I, can I submit to the living room tonight that when we truly pray kingdom prayers, we are seeking God's blessings and his permission to say no, as well as saying yes to our request. That's kingdom prayer. Preparing for either the yes or the no's and not being mad afterwards. Kingdom prayer. We are in agreement with God's will. God, whatever your will is, thy will be done. You see, to pray only for ourselves is to continually ask God for yes. Hello. This is why, this, this is why God puts us in a community. We just can't. It's not just about us, but it's it's about others and it's about family. It's about friends. It's about our co-workers, our neighbors. It's about our church family to pray only for ourselves is to continually ask God's yes to pray for the kingdom. You must be equally ready to and willing to accept God's no. You see, God closes one door only to open a better door later on in our life. And if he doesn't open another door in my expected time, guess what? I'm going to praise him and continue to pray in the hallway until he opens another door. But wherever I am in my life, I'm going to continue to pray kingdom prayers. If he says yes, if he says no, I want God's will to be done in my life. I want to boldly say to someone in the family tonight, you know what? I thank God. <laughs> I thank God for the closed doors in my life. And yes, I do. Yeah, I, I thank God for the closed doors in my life. If, if you are not so fully committed or submitted to God in your spirit that you cannot let him close doors in your life, then you will never be able to find the true will of God for your life. Yeah. Kingdom prayer says, not my will, but thy will be done. It asks God for his kingdom, hear me, for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is established already in heaven. Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane provides our best example of kingdom prayer. Calvary loomed as a great shadow over the heart of Jesus as he made his way to, to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And as the pressure of the moment began to swell in his spirit, the pain was almost unbearable. It was at the moment that Jesus chose three disciples to, to travel farther into the olive grove and hoping that they will, you know, share the, the excru excruciating trial of his decision to 
allow himself to be crucified. Instead, the Bible says they slept, unaware that their eternal destiny was being determined just a few feet away. So Jesus continued to be alone. In Gethsemane, two choices were set before Jesus. Two roads stretch out into the future. Which ro road would he choose? This was more than a matter of choosing the easiest or most convenient way for himself. The father's will was at stake at this moment. And Jesus knew that making the harder choice would bring countless souls to salvation. The easier choice would save himself only. Although Jesus was born to die on the cross and knew very well that, his, uh, that that was his purpose, the decision was still a struggle for him. And there in the garden, he submitted his will completely to the Father and consciously determined to carry out his mission to the bitter end. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was able to pray the ultimate kingdom prayer, not my will but thy will be done. And you can tell the struggle was real because the Bible says that his sweat became drops of blood. Look at the mockers as we continue in this story. Look at the mockers at the cross in, in Matthew 27 and verse 42. Look what the Bible says. He saved others. Himself, he cannot save. <laughs> he saved others, but himself he cannot save. They spoke the truth, but from a scorner's point of view, Jesus could have chosen to save himself, but he didn't. And if he had, there would have been no church. There would have been no Pentecost. There would have been no hope for humanity's redemption. Jesus's great kingdom prayer surrendered his life to gain ours. Wow. He put the father's will the kingdom, he put you and I ahead of himself. That's kingdom prayer. To pray kingdom prayers, hear me, it's a big word that's coming. You must surrender. Somebody say surrender. I've got to surrender my will. Come on, family. If you're going to pray kingdom prayers, you've got to surrender your will. I think the late Bishop T.F. Tenney said it like this, that if you're going to pray God's kingdom to come, your kingdom has got to go. You must surrender your will so completely to the Father that you are able to pray in complete agreement with him. Thy will be done. No alternative motives, no, nothing else as far as an intention is concerned. No, I... I'm about God's will for my life. This is the kind of prayer that delights the father. Yes, the father delights in giving good gifts to those who ask him, and there is nothing wrong with that. Yet his greater desire is that his people should seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And when you begin to pray in this way, you will find greater joy in your journey. Kingdom prayers are those that are focused on the Father's will. It's focused on God himself and his kingdom, not ourselves. Kingdom prayer. Kingdom prayers are selfless prayers. I think the second thing I want to talk about real quickly is kingdom prayers are bold prayers. Kingdom prayers are selfless. Kingdom prayers are bold prayers. <laughs> We, we can see this in the story of Daniel, that Daniel shows us another aspect of kingdom prayers. They are bold prayers, and they require boldness to pray them. Daniel's <laughs> conflict in prayers prove that you can change the destiny of our nation through kingdom prayer. I'm going to say that one more time. Daniel's conflict in prayer, it proves that you can change the destiny of an entire nation through kingdom prayer. Daniel was a fixed star as he battled against a powerful empire and he won that war. His secret to victory can be found in six words as we look in Daniel 6 and verse 10. The Bible says he kneeled as he did a far time. 
You see, family, Daniel prayed three times a day, every day, regardless of the fact that a law had been passed against it. Daniel was a kingdom prayer. His prayers were not just for himself, but his prayers were for others. And nothing could compel him to stop. The king could not force him to bow to this golden image. The jealous uh, quarters could not keep him from the appointing hour for prayer. Ezekiel points to Daniel as one of the greatest intercessors of Old Testament times. Look at what Ezekiel 14 verse 14 says. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save only themselves by their righteousness declares the sovereign Lord. So it, it was Daniel's prayer. Hear me tonight. It was Daniel's prayer which broke the chains of the Babylonian captivity, setting the people of God, the children of Israel, free to fulfill her divine purpose. Daniel's visible enemies tried to keep him from the act of prayer. His invisible adversaries opposed the answering of his prayer, as Daniel later learned in Daniel 10 and verse 13. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Daniel understood what Paul later wrote to the uh, early Christians that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, look what Paul says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Once the angel Gabriel came to Daniel while he was praying, in Daniel 9 and verse 21, he says, while I, was still pray while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in a swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. Michael, the chief of princes, became an ally with Daniel against his unseen foe. Look at what Daniel 10 verse 13 says. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. That'll preach all by itself. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Hear me in the living room tonight, y'all. Invisible forces rule the world, but they are defeated through kingdom prayer. And as Daniel shows us, even the course of global events can be influenced by the persistent prayer of one man. Kingdom prayer is bold prayer. It acts as God's will to be done on earth just as it is in heaven. This kind of prayer is not achieved in a, in a single session or, 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 or even uh, through a, a, a single episode as when Daniel risked his life by defying the king's command against prayer. It took 70 years. Think about it tonight. It took 70 years of faithful intercession before Daniel witnessed the emancipation of his people. So my question to somebody tonight is this. Are you committed to a lifetime of a kingdom prayer? Are you willing to pray day in and day out regardless of immediate results? Will you trust that your prayers are powerful and effective even when you do not personally see the results? Will you have the faith to make a big ask of God, knowing that when you pray in faith and in agreement with God's will, nothing is impossible. These are the, these are the questions that we got to ask ourselves. Kingdom prayer is a consistent, it's an unflinching, unyielding prayer in agreement with God's will. It overflows with confidence in God. It is directly in line with this vision for the world, and it is the most powerful kind of prayer that you can ever imagine. Again, I want to ask the family in the living room tonight, are you willing to move beyond petitioning God only for your own needs and only when it feels urgent or convenient for you to do so? Or are you willing to, to enter into a life that is categorized by daily Faith-filled, bold prayer for the will of God for your life. 
This is the kind of prayer that makes your father, makes our God delights over us. Kingdom prayer is bold. Third thing is this. Kingdom prayers are powerful. Kingdom prayers, selfless. They are bold. Kingdom prayers are powerful. You see, a seed may be small and even old, yet every seed contains power. It contains the power to become. I, I don't want you to miss this tonight. It, it contains the power to become. Jesus compared the kingdom to a tiny seed, a mustard seed. Matthew 13, verse 32, the Bible says it like this, though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. And Jesus said in John 1 and verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. May, may I submit to the living room tonight that you and I have the power to become a child of God. We are children of the most high God. God's children collectively as the church has tremendous potential in the world. Kingdom prayer releases that creative power. Kingdom prayer pursues with passion the spiritual possibilities of God's promises. Kingdom prayer is the seed of the power to become. Though others may believe that you uh, or, or the church have no power left, your kingdom prayer enables you to become all that God wants you to be. Kingdom prayer. It envisions possibilities. Kingdom prayers. Kingdom prayers call upon God to enable you, to enable me, our church, our communities, even our world to become what he wants us to be. Kingdom prayers prayers who who prays such prayers pastor omar who prays such prayers in the word of god look we can look again the hall of faith in, in hebrews chapter 11 the list of many kingdom prayers in most cases we don't we don't know uh, the precise words they prayed but we do see the results think of the men and the women like abraham Moses and, and Rahab and, and Gideon and so many others that the Bible describes in Hebrews 11 verse 33, who through faith, they subdued kingdoms. My goodness, they, who through faith, they wrought righteousness and they obtained promises and they stopped the mouths of lions. These people were able to see what could be and pray accordingly. And those kingdom prayers were answered in powerful ways. I want to I wanna talk to somebody in the living room tonight. Are you willing to allow God to develop the seed of new life in you by continually praying prayers of possibility? Kingdom prayers. Can you envision, envision what God, uh, what, uh, what God might do in your life? in response to faith? What about, what about your family? What, what about our church? What about your community? Remember the biblical heroes in Hebrews 11. Nothing is impossible with God. You have the seed to become within you. Kingdom prayers. People are used to thinking about prayer as a means to you know, get their personal needs met. However, we should understand as a means to praise and adore God, to know him and to come into his presence and to be changed by him, this is why we pray kingdom prayers. So let it be our prayer tonight as I get ready to close that it ought to be said of us, God, my desire is to build your kingdom and not my own. I, I confess most of the time I, how I live, it, it's, it's not like that. 
I spend so much of my day trying to build my kingdom. I spend so much of my day making myself instead of you being the center of my life. We need to be people of God that praise kingdom prayers and will commit to the Lord by saying, God, I need your spirit to remind me minute by minute that this life is not all about me, but it's about you. Your word says that time is coming when every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and your kingdom will be made complete. In the end, that will be all that matters. Nothing that I build for my own glory will be left. So I'm asking you, Lord, to help us in the living room tonight. Help me to stop spending this life focused on myself. And I believe that this is the hour, this is the season where we are as a world and where we are as a church that we must pray, God, I, I want to see my daily life through the eyes of your kingdom. Lord, help us to seek your kingdom in our hearts, in our mind, and in our life. I'm going to stop right here because next week I want to continue with your kingdom come because there's so much more for us to talk about and so much more for us to consider. And, and I pray that we, we get this tonight. I pray that we get, we, we get an understanding of that God loves us and he's calling us to a deeper level in prayer. We're done with shallow prayers. We're, just, we're done with repetition vain repetition that that doesn't please God it doesn't delights God and it doesn't scare the devil God wants to call us bring us into a realm where we're praying kingdom prayers kingdom prayers are selfless kingdom prayers are bold kingdom prayers are these prayers that will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out supernatural blessings on us that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. Kingdom prayers. And I pray that we will continue to uh, take heed to the word of the Lord and take these practical principles through his word and apply it to our everyday life. I just don't want to be a part of a local church. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. I just don't want to do church business. I want to do kingdom business. I just don't want to have relationships. I want to have kingdom relationships. Come on, it's, it's time to put the word kingdom in every aspect of our life. There's another dimension, not just another level, another dimension, kingdom. I, I want to think kingdom minded. I want to be kingdom minded. I want to be a part of kingdom community and kingdom relationships. I want to, I want to do kingdom business. <laughs> Thy will be done not on earth as it is in heaven. I, I, I want what's already established in heaven, what's already settled in heaven, what's already complete and set in heaven. I want that to be downloaded to my earth, kingdom prayers. And I hope and pray that that's your desire as well. Next week, Tuesday, we will, we will go into part two of this lesson of kingdom prayers which will be part seven um, as we continue with some other uh, realms and some other avenues um, to give us a better understanding uh, of what God wants to say to us in this hour and in this season. I'm glad I'm a part of the church and I'm glad you're a part of the church. But moreover, I'm glad that you are a part of the kingdom of God, God's kingdom. And I pray that God's plan and God's purpose that's already established in heaven will be downloaded and manifested on earth, in your earth, in your world, and in your life. Father, I speak a blessing, O oh God, over every child of God, our family and friends that's in the living room tonight, those that are watching uh, that may not be a part of the sanctuary of Elmont, those that are watching that may be new, Lord, and uh, for the first time here, I pray that your word will take root in our hearts, that it, you will speak to us, O oh God, and help us uh, to uh, 
take your word and apply it to our lives. We just don't want to be hearers of your word. We want to be doers. I pray, oh God, and I speak blessings in your favor, Lord God, your hand on every child of God. Give us an understanding, Lord, that you're calling us to, to the kingdom realm, that we're not just a part of a, a, a local church or a local assembly, and Lord, but there, there, there are kingdom blessings that awaits us. There are kingdom opportunities and kingdom relationships and, and kingdom business, Lord God. There's, there, there's a kingdom realm, Lord God, that you are calling us to. And I pray that you will help us within this lesson, Lord God, we consider kingdom prayers. Help us, O oh God, to pray those kingdom prayers. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be done in our earth. We, we speak against vain repetition and we speak against rehearsed prayers, oh God. We pray that as our relationship deepens with you and grows stronger in you, God, that you will enable us. Your spirit, oh God, will make an intercession with us with groanings that cannot be uttered, Lord God. You will enable us and you will help us. You will gift us and strengthen us to pray those kingdom prayers. Give us a kingdom mind, I pray. Give us birth kingdom relationships. Give us kingdom friendships. Lord, grant kingdom business and kingdom opportunities. I speak it to somebody in the living room in the name of Jesus. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give God a virtual praise right now. Come on, YouTube livers, Facebook livers, clap your hands, emojis, hearts, thumbs right now. Let's bombard the comment box with a praise to Almighty God on the online platform tonight because God is calling us higher. God's calling us deeper. And I pray that this blessing, uh, this word was a blessing to you and your family. God's calling us to a level of the kingdom. And God's going to, he, he's getting ready to open up the floodgates of heaven. And he's, he's bringing us to another level amidst of uh, all what's happening around us. Let's not be sidetracked. Let's not be distracted. God, call, God is calling us higher. Uh, before we leave the living room tonight, I, I want us all to sow a seed. Let's give to the work of the Lord. Um, we're so blessed because we're a church that gives and we are continuing to reach people and do what we do in this season uh, because of your gift and your heart to give. And so let's sow a seed. Uh, there's four ways to give. Uh, the information is below the screen. Uh, as we speak tonight, you can mail your check to the P.O. Box address below to our sanctuary members. Use the Faith Teams app uh, or for anyone else. You can text the word give to 347-851-1222 or you can visit our website and give on our church website. Thank you so much for being a participator, for engaging and continuing to support the work of God. And um, thank you so much for being a part of the worship, the word and the giving of the Sanctuary of Elmont. I love you. I'm so glad that you're a part of the living room tonight. Next week, Tuesday, I hope you're able to join us as we wrap up kingdom business, thy kingdom come. That's our prayer. That's our intention. That's our desire. We want God's kingdom to come to our earth. This is Pastor Omar. Be well, be safe. Till next time, be blessed.